Yo, what's up with y'all boys and girls, man? Hey, it's Jay Briggs and with my guy, Chris Ruffalo, and we're back. Back at it, man, out of the Olympic break, out of the All-Star break. The WNBA is back. We're back cooking it up, man. We got three games on the card today. Ruffalo, what's happening, my man? What's happening? Dude, it's been a month. Can you believe it? It's been a month since we've had WNBA action, but we're back. Like you said, it's almost like it just feels like we never left. We blinked. Feels like we were just talking about the last game before the break. You had the All Star game, and now we're back at it again for the second half. So, plenty of sports going on. You know, we're starting to ramp up into that busy part of our year, but doesn't mean that the WNBA is going to take a back seat. So, still got some money to be made on the hardwood. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, y'all know the drill. Y'all know what we do here, man. So, let's do exactly that. Let's kick the crap out of the books. Let's make some money tonight. Without further ado, man, let's hop right into tonight's. WNBA action. All right, ladies and gentlemen, first game back. We got the Minnesota Lynx at home at the crib with the Washington Mystics coming in. Lynx playing eight here in this one. Rufalo, start us off, my man. What you like here? Yeah, you know, I, I went back and forth on this one because we all know the, you know the Lynx still the best team defensively in the WNBA, but, you know, I think I have to go with the points with the Mystics here. You know, the Mystics were a covering machine going into the Olympic break, and that was when they were still banged up. But I think the common theme that we're going to be able to talk about, at least for the first couple games coming back from the break, is that teams got had a chance to get healthy. You're, you're going to notice a lot of injury reports in the WNBA have cleared up over the Olympic break. And like I said, the Mystics were covering point spreads left and right when they were banged up. Now that they're healthy, I think they're gonna they're gonna give the Lynx a bit of a battle here. When these two teams met uh, in the lone meeting this season, it was a seven point game. I think we could have another close one here. I think the Lynx win, but I think they win by five or six. So I'm gonna sneak. I'm gonna take the, the Mystics to sneak inside the back door and uh, cover with the eight points. For sure, for sure, for sure, man. I hate to start off our first game back disagreeing, but I'm gonna have to go the other way. Um, I'm liking the Minnesota Lynx here in this one i will say the month of july was not a great month for them that was their worst month of the season they really struggled in that month and like you said the mystics were a covering machine but coming out of the break i think health goes both ways the mystics i still think you know they're still one of the worst teams in the league while the Lynx are one of the best and if they come out and lock up defensively like we know they can while still putting the ball in the bucket i think this is a double digit win for the Lynx. so I think the Lynx are head and shoulders the better basketball team. I know they didn't win by this line in the meeting earlier this season, uh, which was in Minnesota, but I think they get up and over at this time. I like a nice double-digit win here, Ruffalo. I'm going to lay the points with, the, with Minnesota. Next game up, we got the Phoenix Mercury out on the road facing the Chicago Sky Sky. Three-point dogs at home at the crib. And this one, I'm not totally in love with this game, be real with y'all. Um, I'm going to lean on the Phoenix Mercury in this by laying the three. One of the biggest components I see in this game is I don't think that the Sky's rebounding edge is going to be there like it is against most teams. We know that the um, Mercury have Brittany Griner down low. You know, Griner coming off the Olympic run, Tarazi as well. I expect them to still be kind of in shape, in form ready to come right out of the break, hoping uh, maybe catch the sky napping in a spot right out of the break. Not a, Again, not my favorite game, but I would lean on the Mercury playing the points here in this one. I think they're just the better team, and I think they get the uh, get the sky in their first matchup of the season. What do you think, Ruffalo? Yeah, I think this is a game where I'm, I'm with you. I don't love it, um, but I will lean towards the Mercury for right now. I want to check the status of Kennedy Carter. Um, she is listed as day to day. Uh, there was a there was a word that she tweaked her ankle during a scrimmage uh, last week, so I'm not sure if she if that ankle is going to be 100. percent And you know, while we talk about Angel Reese and how you know Angel Reese is sort of the big name on uh, you know on the sky now, Kennedy Carter. The first time we'd really heard of her was that that ish, that uh, thing with Kate, Caitlin Clark, that little shove. But quietly, you look, she's put up 17.2 points per game, so that is a big loss if she can't play. And like you said, even if she does, I can't imagine she's 100%. I still think that the Mercury are the better team. They're missing Mariah Jefferson. They're missing Rebecca Allen. But 
I still think that the Mercury do enough here. This is a high scoring team in this in the sky have had a tendency to give up their fair share of points as well. So I, I think there's just too much here going in the Mercury's favor. I got to go with Phoenix as well laying this one. And in our last and final game of the night, we got the Los Angeles Sparks at home at the crib with the Liberty coming in. Liberty laying double digits, Roof. You laying it? I don't think I can. I mean, I know, you know, the, the LA Sparks are banged up. I mean, obviously Cameron Brinks out for the year. You know, you're missing Stephanie Talbot, Lexi Brown, and, you know, and, you know, Ari McDonald. Excuse me, Ari McDonald. But, uh, you know, the thing about the Sparks is that even with the injuries they've had throughout the season, they found a way to cover. They're seven and two against the spread as a double digit underdog this season. And the thing about the Liberty is that, you know, you had a, a couple of players, you know, Sabrina Ionescu, Brianna Stewart, John Quell Jones that went to the Olympics, coming back. I think they're just there could be a bit of a you know, a bit of a lackadaisical effort here, just a little bit of sleepwalking through the first game back. Would it surprise anybody if the Liberty blew out the Sparks here? No. Liberty are the better team on paper by a mile. But I just think that there's sort of like that hangover that comes from the first game back after a long layoff, maybe a little bit of rust. And uh, I think that the uh, the Sparks could potentially take advantage of that here and at least keep the game close. You know, the Liberty at times have had a tendency to play with their food a little bit and kind of, you know, make games a little bit closer than they need to be. Uh, I'm going to take a shot here with the Sparks plus the 11. I think maybe this could be an 8-9 point win for the Liberty here, but uh, I still think the Sparks cover. For sure, for sure, for sure. For me in this one, I'm going to have to agree, man. I'm going to have to agree. I know I've taken the Liberty a lot this season and heading into the All-Star break, them girls was open as they had won four straight. Um, the Sparks, though, they also were playing decently heading into the break. Um, you know, they were in a little mini homestand that's four of their last five were there, and I kind of like what I've seen from them in certain games. 11 points is a lot. I think um, the Liberty are a little overrated, a little overvalued. I know we've seen the Liberty beat up on the Sparks in both games already this season, but – I think this one comes down to the Liberty win it, Sparks sneaking that back door with a cover. I'm looking at like a seven, eight, nine point win for the Liberty in this one. I think the Sparks do enough to to get us the back door cover. I'm gonna grab the points with the Sparks in our last and final game of the night. And that's gonna conclude this episode of the WNBA Layup Session. As always, I appreciate each and every one of you that continue to tune in and watch this video, man. We're back. Back at it again. Y'all know the drill here, man. We're trying to kick the crap out of the books. Turn a profit, Ben hoops, man. Ruffalo, appreciate you joining me as always. What you got going on? Yeah, for me, Pick Dogs Premium, you know, a great time to jump on board. All the sports are starting to ramp up like we talked about in the intro. Uh, this is a great time to jump on. We're still going to have some WNBA. I'm going to have a WNBA play of the day on the board as well as some, uh, some baseball. It's a small baseball card, but still, like we always say, plenty of money to be made. So uh, definitely a great time to jump on. What do you got going on, Jay? Hey, I got a WNBA play for y'all as well. We don't look out, man. We got football today. We got baseball. So another video. Check it out right here. Um, but that's all I got going on, man. Money making Thursday. Appreciate each and every one of y'all, man. We'll see y'all soon. We out of here.